Okay, guys, wanted to uh, address this coronavirus as it pertains to the transportation industry, expediting in a van specifically. Before I get started, though, I'd like to hear what you guys have to say about it. If you would, comment below and give me your thoughts on uh, the coronavirus uh, affecting transportation and the coronavirus in general. Just uh, whether it's got you concerned, whether it's not concerning to you, whether... Uh, you think it's a conspiracy theory? Whatever you think, if you would, just uh, comment below. I'm curious to to read about what uh, you guys have to say about this. All right, so let's get into this. The first rumor uh, that's out there, and the the one that is that would cause the most problems for us in this industry, is the rumor that transportation uh, will be shut down completely, as far as the highways and everything being shut down. Uh, uh, again, that's just a few people claiming that that's what they've heard through a friend, through a friend, whatever. Uh, one of those places I heard it from was at a drop-off point I had a few days ago. They said they had heard that the highways were going to be shut down, only emergency and, uh, you know, military, police, whatever, would be allowed on the highways. Now, I haven't been able to confirm that. I haven't found anything uh, online substantiating that. So if anybody has anything, any information on that, that they've heard anything uh, similar to that uh, and have a link or anything, uh, put it in the comments below, please. Now, my opinion on uh, transportation as far as the roadways being shut down, I don't believe that's likely. I think it would have to really become a really, really much bigger issue than what it has been. I mean, obviously, it's a big issue, uh, national emergency being declared and... Uh, uh, hours of service for uh, for people hauling uh, coronavirus relief aid and uh, and, and supplies. Uh, so so certain certain measures have been taken that that this is you know it's obviously a serious issue that they're dealing with. But I don't believe it's going to get to the point that they're going to shut down transportation because again they have to get the stuff uh, you know from point A to point B. Uh, you can use rail cars or whatever to get from major uh, areas, but once you get to those areas, they have to be shipped to their independent locations, and you're only going to do that via truck, straight truck, a van, car, whatever it may be, but it's got to be transported via vehicle. I went on uh, uh, FMCSA site, and I didn't find anything. Uh, the only thing that was listed on there was about the hours of service, as I just uh, mentioned. Uh, that doesn't affect us in a van because we don't do logs anyhow. But those in straight trucks and big trucks, uh, it could affect them if they're hauling goods. From what I understand, it's related to only those that are hauling that kind of relief. Now, uh, I haven't talked to anybody that's that's doing the logs, so I don't know if that's kind of a kind of a blanket uh, uh, issue as far as that they're allowing everybody to do it. But that's the concern at the moment is. Uh, is uh, getting the goods where they need to go because you're not going to stop all essential items. I mean, people are going crazy with this toilet paper shit, and it's just wow. I don't even get. I don't know where it began. I don't know why it is, uh, but it is. But as far as food, water, things like that, medicines, whatever, whatever hospitals need. I mean, you're going to still be getting essential items uh, shipped everywhere. So there, I just don't see that being the case. If I hear anything different, I'll definitely keep you guys up to date. I'll post it on my page and, and try to make a video about it as soon as possible if I hear anything otherwise. The second major rumor is that automotive is going to shut down. Automotive plants, uh, assemblies, and, and whatnot are going to shut down. Uh, because if that happened, that would that would have a huge impact on, on the expediting industry in general. Uh, a lot of, a, a good percentage of our freight is automotive related. So that would definitely have a huge impact on our ability to, to get freight. Wouldn't stop it completely because, you know, there's more freight out there. But what that would do if that happened is obviously volumes volumes go down and capacity is still going to stay pretty high aside from those that have, that have just decided to just go home and be with their family or, you know, get away from people in general. So uh, capacity is still going to be very high. Volume is going to be low. Uh, so it's, uh, at that point, you would think with the virus involved and, and the threat that's out there, you would say, ah, the rate should be stronger at that point. You know, rate should go up. But with this industry, 
with capacity high, volume low, more than likely the rates are going to go soft. Uh, it, we've already felt that to an extent. The rates have been a little bit soft so far, and uh, uh, you know, volume has been a little down already due to the automotive industry taking a little bit of a hit because automotive sales are down, which means production is obviously going to be down. And uh, so we're feeling that to an extent. It's nothing major at the moment. Uh, me personally, I've done, I've still done, you know, decent for the year. Uh, but I've noticed a good fluctuation in the rates. Also, what I've heard is that uh, there's a possibility that these uh, automotive plants, if they don't shut down, there's also talk that they'll start uh, having people wear masks and gloves going in there and possible testing on site for the virus. Uh, the one thing they are doing for sure at the moment, now I don't know if it's all automotive uh, locations, but they're having people, they're having their drivers fill out a little questionnaire about whether they've traveled out of the country, uh, been in contact with anybody, uh, things of that nature. So there is at least that being done at the moment. So with those two things, those are the two major scares uh, and concerns uh, with us. Uh, you know, I've had some drivers ask about whether they should stay near home uh, during all this. And... I, my answer is yes. I mean, try to stay within reason of being home. I would, at the bare minimum, stay east of the Mississippi. I mean, freight's already tough to get when you go west in a van, uh, so it's gonna. It, it, it stands to reason it would probably get worse if this uh, continues to go at this uh, rate. So it's obviously better to be safe than sorry. As far as the transportation industry is concerned, uh, those are two major things. Uh, as far as uh, you know, because there's been a ban not a ban but there's been people self-quarantining there's been uh you know the the restriction of trying to have groups of people together you know schools have been being shut down in places uh in ohio they've been closed uh so with that being said some businesses are going to be affected which could affect freight so so it, it's it, it seems that the, it should just it should be some kind of effect to our industry it's just a matter of how extreme it's going to get so uh, I'm just kind of taking it as it comes. Uh, I had planned home time next week anyhow, so that'll give me time to kind of get a get a moment to sit back and, and look a little a little more closely and clearly at what's going on instead of being out here on the road just, you know, trying to run. Now, I just wanted to give my opinion for what it's worth on my thoughts on this uh, whole virus in general. Uh, you know, everybody's got their their theories or their beliefs there you know some people as i said are extremely freaking out some people are saying oh this is bullshit some people are saying it's conspiracy uh all that good shit uh my opinion is i'm not overly concerned i mean obviously i'm concerned i'm keeping track uh, and keeping up to date on as much information as possible as far as uh how deadly this is how how quickly it can spread all of that and uh, so far, what I see, the mortality rate isn't extremely high. I believe it's between 1% and 2% was last I heard, possibly even less. And, and with that, that's not a, a very accurate number because, for one, you don't know what information you're getting from China. Uh, that, that's been the slow roll of it to begin with is, is their ability to share information and to, to even warn people about what's going on. Uh, but even so... You know, there's obvious concern that how much of what we considered our regular flu season, which was, you know, considered a very bad flu season uh, thus far, was actually corona, you know, the COVID-19, as opposed to the regular flu, the regular influenza. So that number could climb as far as the deaths, but at the same time, the cases of having it would rise, which would, you know, again, keep the keep the mortality rate pretty pretty down. And our ability to test right now, from my understanding, is, is pretty limited, so we don't have a true gauge of how many people actually have it. Uh, again, you have more pe more cases of it, and the mortality and the deaths are still kind of low. Obviously, the percentage is going to drop, so you know a, a, a clear number could end up being a more accurate number, could end up being even less than 1%. Uh, with that being said, so far, they're saying that it's 10 times more deadly than influenza which is bad, but at the same time, keeping numbers into perspective, you know, one or two out of a hundred, you know, that's, it, it's, it's not a, it's not like the walking dead kind of scenario. It's not something like that. It's, it's, it's concerning. It's 
by all rights, you know, be careful and be be cautious about everything. But it's also not looking like it's going to be the end of the world as we know it at the moment. One of the unfortunate things is uh, with this self quarantine, they're asking people not to go into nursing homes and visit with your with with your loved ones if they're in there, uh, because the elderly are more susceptible to what's going on. Uh, and a case in point uh, as to how easily it can be spread is you know the NBA right before they shut their season down, you know had that Rudy Gobert of the Utah Jazz thinking it was funny to go around touching everything in a locker room because he had a he had a cough or whatnot and. Uh, he thought it was funny and, you know, ended up, another teammate ended up coming down with the COVID-19. So, uh, it, it's easily spread. So, the number of people that are going to get it is definitely going to continue to rise. Obviously, we're going to have more deaths over it because we're going to have more cases of it. Well, I got distracted there for with the phone call. I'm not going to put that in the video, but I don't remember where I stopped. I know I was saying something about Rudy, Rudy Gobert uh, spreading it to a teammate. Uh, so it's easily spread. Cases are cases are going to be obviously going to be rising. Deaths are going to rise uh, because of more cases. But you know, with the self quarantining and the the uh, canceling of you know large gatherings, uh, it's obviously going to help. And uh, I was watching watching a video the other day, which which uh, showed it in like a a, a graph type of uh, way, which was basically you know you have your y axis, x axis, and then you have if you don't quarantine and you don't stop the gathering, you're going to peak with the amount of cases you have very quickly, which imagine, you know, have an imaginary line going across there, which is, which represents your, uh, your resources to deal with all of this. And if you, if your cases go high very quickly and without self quarantining and stopping the, the large gathering of people, you're going to exceed the available resources that you have to uh, deal with this outbreak. And and so it's going to hinder the ability to take care of people. Some people aren't going to get the proper care because it's not going to be the proper testing, r available resources. So with the self quarantining, it's going to kind of gradually rot. You know, cases are going to add up gradually. So it's going to keep it at a gradual. Uh, case by case because it's going to gradually spread and you're going to stay below you know exceeding our resource availability so it, it's going to be you're going to have better care uh yeah going to have quicker responses and and all of that good stuff as far as the self-quarantine so i'm 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 with the uh self-quarantining and the the stopping of large gatherings of people i'm definitely with that i don't think we're at a point that everybody needs to not do anything period just you know take precautions you know whether it is wear a mask and you know constantly parole yourself and you know all of that good shit so uh i definitely take it you know serious but i don't believe it's uh it's a major issue to where like i said life as we know it is gonna be altered forever right, so so that's my opinion and my two cents worth on the coronavirus and how it uh, pertains to transportation and how I view it, uh, you know, just in general. So uh, anybody's got anything to say, I'm curious to see what you guys have to say about what I think about it and what I've had to say about it. So if you would, comment below and, you know, let's, let's hear what you got to say. Uh, until the next video, man, everybody be safe and uh, I'll holler at you then.